سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لولايته واختصه برسالته واكرمه بنبوته امينا على غيبه ورحمه للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد واله واله السلام اوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله واخففكم من عقابه فان الله ينجي من اتقاه بمفازتهم لا يمسهم سوء ولا هم يحزنون ويكرم من خافه يقيهم شر ما خافوا ويلقيهم نظرة وسرورا وأرغبكم في كرامة الله الدائمة وأخففكم مقابه الذي لا انقطاع له ولا نجاة لمن استوجبه فلا تغرنكم الدنيا ولا تركنوا إليها فإنها دار غرور كتب الله عليها وعلى أهلها الفناء فتزبدوا منها الذي يكرمكم الله به من التقوى والعمل الصالح فإنه لا يصل إلى الله من أعمال العباد إلا ما خلص منها ولا يتقبل الله إلا من المتقين After all due praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator, our nourisher our provider, our sustainer, our Lord we seek best of his blessings and favors for his most beloved servant, for best of his creations, our Nabi and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his purified Ahlul Bayt, progeny Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Jama'atul Muslimin, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, I remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this sacred hour of Jum'ah. Respected brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we just entered the great auspicious month of Rabi'ul Awwal. The month which reminds us, which connects us to this greatest personality of human history, this greatest existence in the world of existence and what exists. Our Nabi and our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam his birth and milad in this month of course and indeed it is appropriate to celebrate and it is crucial to remember with any excuse this great man this great nabi and prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and all the time review our relationship with him our connection with him respected brothers and sisters beside his milad or birth in this month also this month reminds us of his historical hijra and migration to Medina from Mecca. This is a common mistake or misunderstanding that people think that 
migration or hijra took place in muharram hijrat never took place in muharram hijra took place according to majority of historians and scholars on the first of rabiul awwal from mecca and arrived in madina after staying few days in outskirts of madina al quba on 12th of rabiul awwal so the day which is celebrated by our sunni brothers as the day of milad is also the day of prophet's arrival in madina everybody agrees on that date there is no dispute 12th of rabiul awwal he arrived in madina he left on the first of rabiul awwal or according to some on 27th or 28th of safar but not in muharram at all so this whole and therefore basically islamic year starts from rabiul awwal because arabic calendar was from muharram so they included it those two months in the coming years of course otherwise is speaking about hijra and congratulating and greeting with a new year and all that is nothing but a effort to divert attentions from tragedy of karbala and ahlul bayt and injustice committed to them in this month like so many different efforts this is one of them anyway this is indeed a very important historical incident in the islamic history no doubt any doubt uh, you know which completely changed the whole direction of the history and flow of events completely very very important it's so important this particular incident that islamic year was of course decided with this incident hijra as the starting point of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam migration what i would like to say to na today brothers and sisters that hijra or migration is a historical incident in history of islam there are a number of hijrats which took place in the early history of islam the hijra to habasha to ethiopia in other words of the early sahaba and companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam under the leadership of jafar at tayyar was one hijra and then there are some other small migrations in between and then the finally the major or the main hijra or migration of our nabi and prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam to madina and the result of this hijra of course is establishment of full fledged full scale islamic society islamic state islamic system and as a result of course introduction of islamic civilization basically hijrat and migration is basically the turning point in the history of islam where islamic da'wa from being just a movement an invitation toward path of allah became a full scale civilization society and with all the different uh, issues connected to that hijra of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam also uh, created a culture of love and care and devotion and sacrifice for each other beside and beyond ethnic connections family or tribal relationships in form of muhajirin and ansar in other words major two groups of muslimin after migration in madina were named as muhajir or migrants and ansar or the people of madina in other words the supporters 
but the relationship between them the brotherhood which was established between them the sacrifice of people of medina for the sake of their brothers migrants who migrated from you know matmakka to them this is all you know created a great culture of love and brotherhood and sisterhood and care and and so on for the umma as one ummah of islam i'd like to say to you brothers and sisters that this is historical but beside history the hijra itself you know is a institution in islam in quranic and islamic teachings hijra is not just a isolated uh, historical incident or incidents which took place in the early history of islam no hijrat and jihad these are two almost parallel uh, institutions who have continuity it does not have to be isolated and it's not limited to history the wajib and obligation of hijra even until today it is valid like jihad is valid the institution of hijra is a institution which islam promotes it not only in certain periods of history but all the time more than 14 times the quran speaks about hijra sometimes in a very demanding manner sometimes in a praising and rewarding manner for example in surah mubarak ay nisa and this is really important again beyond the historical background surah mubarak ay nisa verse number 97 speaks about day of qiyamah inna alladhina tawaffahum al malaikatu zalimi anfusihim and those people whose souls are taken over by angels while they oppress themselves they were sinners in other words qalu fi ma kuntum in the day of qiyamah malaika will say to them where are you were why you are corrupt why you are sinner why you are drawn into sins like that fi ma kuntum where you were qalu kunna mustazafina fil ardh their response will be that we were weak oppressed in the earth in other words we used to live in a society where we were oppressed we were not allowed to practice deen to follow deen to follow right path therefore we did not and therefore we committed sins malaika will say qalu alam takun arzullah wasiya fatuhajiru fiha faulaika ma wahum jahannam wasaat masira malaika will not accept this excuse that you were in a society where you were forced to commit sin no alam takun arzullah wasiya wasn't allah's earth big enough wide enough for you to migrate for to hajru fiha to migrate and save your deen no this excuse is not accepted fa ula ikama wa hum jahannam indeed their place is jahannam and what a terrible destiny and place so in this way those who do not migrate and make environment and conditions of the society where they live excuse for their wrong doings not acceptable in another verse almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who do muhajirat when he says wal ladina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim a'zamu darajatan inda allah and those who make hijra and those who make jihad and those who make sacrifices by their assets and by their souls indeed by almighty allah subhanahu wa taala they have a 
great status in the law wa ulaika humul faizu so hijra migration moving from place to place is something which quran establishes as an institution promotes encourages naturally quran speaks about different types of hijrats different types of migrations the first migration of course is a spiritual and internal migration migration and movement from obedience of shaitan and nafs to obedience of allah this is the most important hijrat and migration hmm. امیر المومنین امام علی علیہ السلاۃ والسلام سے و یقول الرجل حاجرت ولم یہاجر انما المہاجرون الذین یہجرون السیعات ولم یاتو بها سمن سیز دیٹ آئی ایم اے مائگرنٹ آئی ایم اے مہاجر tell him that he did not migrate he is not muhajir indeed muhajir which is value are those who leave and abandon sins and don't go back to them so migration and movement from path of shaitan to path of allah that is the most important migration migrate move move away move that is then another very important muhajirat or migration which is quran directly speaks about it which history of anbiya is full of those muhajirin is muhajirat and migration to save your deen and iman in a society if you cannot practice your religion you're not supposed to live there you're supposed to move or opposite to that and let me tell you one of the kabira sins is arab what is arab when you migrate from a society where you can practice your deen to a society where you cannot practice your deen this is called kabira sin in the society where you cannot keep hijab now you move to a society where you cannot even keep hijab for example in our times where you cannot practice islam and islamic laws and islamic commands that's haram and if you are living already in a society like that hijrat is compulsory migrate to a place where you can practice your deen Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a very beautiful hadith which says man farra bi dinihi min arzin ila arz wa in kana shibran min al arz istawjib al janna wa kana rafiq muhammad wa ibrahim alaihi salam beautiful alaihi salam prophet says that who ran away with his religion with his iman and faith from a place to a place from an earth to another earth when can she even a one lap of you know your hand he is deserving for janna and not only that he is friend of nabi muhammad and nabi ibrahim why because these are two very important migrants of islamic history ibrahim hijrat may migration after migration in ramazan alhamdulillah we could manage to this previous ramazan tafsir of surah mubarak ay kahf quran gives example of those young people why they went to the cave to kahf because they could not practice their deen in the society where they living so they decided to leave the city and move into the mountains isolated themselves in quran of course it speaks about them another hijrat which is highly recommended is to migrate for seeking information and knowledge 
Surah Tawbah, verse number 11, sorry, verse number 122, it says, Surah Mubarakah Tawbah, verse number 122. Why, why not? This is the case. That if everybody cannot migrate, why not? A group of people from every community, from every nation, why they don't migrate? For what? To seek knowledge. To achieve education. So when they come back, they can serve their community and people. This is another, of course, you know, important hijrat. Another important hijrat, brothers and sisters, is hijrat even for business, for better life. Nothing wrong with it. If you can protect your deen, provide it. But if you migrate and you move for greener pastures, for better life, there's absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, Islam again encourages it. Because indirectly that will result in promotion of Islam. If you, you know, don't want to, how many places in the world today, they are Muslim today, they are followers of Islam today, you know why? Not because da'is and du'at and uh, ulama and muballighin went there to tabliq deen or to promote Islam there. No. People went to do business there. People went there to go business. But once they went business there, they also promoted Islam and whole country or whole religion become Muslim. Far East is example. This Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, that whole area. Mainly result of business people who migrated toward that side. And gradually the whole area and region became, of course, Muslim. Huh? Quran very clearly says, وَمَنْ يُحَاجِرْ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْزِ مَرَاغِمًا كَسِيرًا بَاسِعًا Someone who migrates, intention is important. If niyat and intention is فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ You know, Quran says, Allah's promises, then you will move. Indeed and indeed, you will find plenty of ni'mat of Allah. Maragaman kathira. Plenty of Allah's blessings in the earth. What you cannot find where you live, if you move and migrate, you will find it. Huh? Intention is important. Huh? So this institution is important. And one quick result, if this institution of migration is sacred and important, and Islam and Quran and Deen encourages it. Then one responsibility is also that result of this migration, challenges which come in result of this migration also must be respected. Then xenophobia does not make any sense. Sometimes person is surprised to see that so-called people who are very even religious or call themselves Muslim, but they have greatly this xenophobic tendencies. Rizq is in hand of Allah. Nobody comes to take away your rizq, my brother. If migration of Prophet and how Prophet ﷺ established relationship between Muhajireen and Ansar, you look at them, then you realize Islamic culture Islamic value system, the challenges as a result of migration appear. How are we supposed to, you know, face them in place of falling in shaitan and this anti-Islamic thinking and tendencies like xenophobia and racism. Awsikum ibadallah wa nafsi bi taqwallah wa asuman Allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa jar al akhirat khairin lana wa lakum fa inna khair al hadis wa ablaqum muhizat al muttaqin. كتاب الله العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر
الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نستہدی و نومن بھی و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیعات عامالنا من یهد اللہ فلا مدل اللہ و من جلل فلا حادی اللہ و اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک اللہ و اشہد ان محمد عبد و رسوله ارسله بالہدا و دین الحق لیظہره علی الدین کله و لو کرہ المشرکون اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک اللہ و اشہد ان محمد عبد و رسوله الذي جعله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا بنذيرا وداعيا لله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشاد ومن يعصهما فقد غضى أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله الذي ينفع بتاعته من عتاه والذي يضر بمعصيته من عصاه الذي إليه معادكم وعليه حسابكم فإن التقوى وسیعت اللہ فیکم و فی اللذین من قبلکم قال اللہ عز و جل ولقد وسین اللذین اوتو الكتاب من قبلکم و ایاکم ان اتقو اللہ و ان تکفرو فإن للہ ما فی السماوات و ما فی الارض و کان اللہ غنیا حمیدا ان تفعو بموعزت اللہ والزمو کتابہ فإنہو ابلغ الموعزہ و خیر الامور فی المعاد آقبتا ولقد اتقد اللہ الحجہ فلا يهلك من حلك إلا أن بينة ولا يحيا من حيا إلا أن بينة وقد بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الذي أرسل به فالزموا وصيته وما ترك فيكم من بعده من الثقلين كتاب الله وأهل بيته اللذين لا يدل من تمسك بهما ولا يهتدي من تركهما اللهم صلي وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين وإمام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صلي على علي أمير المؤمنين ووسي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصلي على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء السيدة النساء العالمين وصلي على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وصلي على أئمة المسلمين وهداة المؤمنين وهماة المستضعفين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي باقر العلوم وجعفر ابن محمد الصادق وموسى ابن جعفر الكاظم وعلي ابن موسى الرضا ومحمد ابن علي الجواد وعلي ابن محمد العادي والحسن ابن علي الاسكري والحجة ابن الحسن الاسكري القائم المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك ثلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم افتح له فتحا يسيرا وانصره نصرا عزيزا اللهم أزهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أهد من الخالق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة في سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفنا وما قصرنا عنه فعلمنا أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله Once again I remind brothers and sisters for taqwa of Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى Respected brothers and sisters in this week we spoke about the situation of uh, some sort of a protest in Iran last week and big issue was freedom why people are not allowed to wear whatever they are allowed to wear but really this is not the case as I explained to you it's not an issue of what you are supposed to wear but it's an issue of a public 
decency and chastity, which every society keeps it according to its own cultural, religious values and system. Nobody forces you what you do in your house, what you wear or how you interact with each other. But when you come in a society, there are some norms. Amazing are these people who shout and who demand for this freedom. But look at them, that them themselves in their own country, they don't allow even basic religious freedom. Let draw your attention. In France this week, another mosque was closed. So far, 25 masajid has been sealed. Huh? Is this freedom? Is this freedom? In the same France, who shouts more than anybody else for freedom, there is no freedom to keep hijab. And non-hijab is forced on the people. You are saying that you cannot wear hijab, you must be naked, because that's our culture. Because that's French society's norm. And amazingly, we have no right to say that to be decent, because that is our culture, because that is our value system. In your value system, being naked is value, being indecent is value, promoting corruption is value, and it must be forced. In government schools, a girl cannot wear a scarf and come. But amazing is this. Everywhere, few people, of course, were killed, and you call them brutality, dictatorship, and so on. But what about when you kill? In your political studies, every day, when this whole movement, Black Life Matters, exposes your brutality against people, every day in the United States, why there is no protest, why there is no voice, why there is no condemnation. When Israelis and Zionists kill openly, publicly, without any hesitation, innocent people. In 2000, they killed that Muhammad Durra in front of cameras, a child seeking shelter by his father, and they shot him and killed him. All the way from that to until now, when they, few months ago, they killed Shri Nabu Akila, a journalist. How many people are killed? How many times you have condemned? How many have times you have demanded sanctions against Israel for committing these heinous crimes against humanity. No, nothing, you know. And not only that, your supporters and the groups from behind, you support them. They come and commit the worst crimes inside Islamic countries and nothing happens. I am so disgusted and stressed to again report that this morning, again in Afghanistan, a huge number of students who were busy writing their entrance test to enter university. The same ISIS which you created according to what you yourself admitted and acknowledged comes and blasts and kills almost 50 young boys and girls writing their entrance exams for university. And hundreds of them injured. What is their crime? 
they are Shia, they are followers of Ahlul Bayt, and you are agents who got no sympathy for Sunni or Shia, but their purpose is to create this sectarian war there and civil unrest there and make things in your direction you want, you do that with your support. That's what, unfortunately, realities of the world in which we live, where beautiful slogans are given, where deceiving uh, rhetoric has been spoken, but the realities on ground are different. You say, people are forced to wear hijab. Where people are forced to hijab, be, be, I was myself, myself personally just, as you know that few weeks ago in Tehran, uh, to attend a conference, and that conference was of course conference of ulama and religious scholars. The hotel was full of maulanas or ulama or shiyukh or people with this uh, particular outfit and dresses and you know, Full, at least 300, 400 people in that hotel. But right in that hotel, where this conference was taking place in Tehran, there are restaurants, two, three restaurants. When we used to come down to go to the conference or to hall, women sitting in these restaurants without hijab at all, boys, girls, everything. That's what my own experience I'm talking about. Before this incident, I'm talking, not after this incident. But to promote and to exploit for political favors, for political agenda, that's how it is, unfortunately.